Matthew 13, verse 44. Talking about the kingdom, mysteries, and uh, parables. Again, verse 44. This is the fifth mystery. The kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> that's a literal, physical kingdom. It's like a... It's like unto treasure hid in the field. We'll, we'll get an explanation of this in a moment. The which when a man has found, found the treasure. There is bingo. He hide it. He doesn't hide the treasure. Here's a treasure. And then he goes and hides. Where is God? Right now to the nation of Israel. He's in heaven. Where is Jesus Christ to the nation of Israel and to the church? He's in heaven. Hidden. And for joy, found a treasure, will be. Thereof goeth and selleth all that he has. And buyeth that field. So there's a purchasing. Of what is found. The purchase is because. Adam. Gave it up. Now God already redeemed Israel. Under the blood of the Passover lambs. In Exodus 12. And 13. <clears throat> and the kingdom of heaven. We'll, get this, we'll explain Number five, number six. The kingdom of heaven, heaven, is like to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Now you can apply what we're reading spiritually. And what we're going to read right now, there are books, you know, the church, the great price, the great pearl, the great price. I'm going to show you something. Spiritually, you can apply it, but doctrinally, you're, you're wrong. Who, when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Okay, two things. We know approximately around 32 AD, Jesus Christ suffered and died at Calvary, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. Now, according to I'm going to get his name. I wrote it down, but I didn't get I, know the one. I think it's answer. Let me go out of Schofield's notes here. Because uh, this is important. And these dates are not exact. They're not perfect, like the Bible. Unser puts Matthew written about traditionally A.D. 37. My Bible happens to lay out the book of Acts by the dates. By 37 A.D. or A.D. 37, you are at Acts 9, maybe going to Acts 10. The Ethiopian eunuch has gotten saved. Peter may not have gone to Cornelius' house yet. Okay? Paul has not written any books yet. We are not talking about the church or the Christian in Matthew 13. Now, spiritualize it. And there's a great book out there, uh, the great... Uh, with the pearl. The, the pearl of great price. There's a message out there, the pearl of great price. Yeah, Jesus Christ suffered and died for the church. Yes. But we're not that pearl. But we are that pearl because Paul says we're lively stones and the only stones that have life are pearls which comes from the, from the oysters.
But when you nail it down doctrinally, there's no church, there's no Christian, there is no death, burial, and resurrection as of yet when Jesus speaks. And he's speaking to the people, and he's going to speak to his disciples, all Jewish. And you want to go run in there and grab that pearl and say, it's the church, it's the Christian. And then you turn around and say, you know, replacement theology, replacement, uh, the, the evil's a replacement theology. Well, so is it when you steal what Jesus speaks about Israel, when you steal it for yourself. Who, when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So he finds a treasure. He goes out in the field, buys the field, so he can claim that treasure. He finds a pearl, one pearl. And he sells all he has to buy that one pearl. Well, in God's frame of mind today, <clears throat> All right, if you want to say it, there are two pearls. One for the nation of Israel and one for the church. And you can't say they're the same. Because Israel is under laws. And the law is coming back in the tribulation. And the laws are going to be there in the millennium. And when you're looking at the church, you, you don't no longer have the, the Jew you have... Jew and Gentile. <laughs> That's doctrine. Now that Jesus Christ gave all that he had, giving it all up for us. Okay. That's not the content. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net, number seven, a fishing net that was cast into the sea, probably most likely the Mediterranean Sea, and gathered every kind, fish, or anything, that, anything that gets in the net by what he says. So, here's a treasure, and it's in the field. One particular treasure. Here is this one pearl of great value. Now, here's his fishing net. <clears throat> and got every kind. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good vessels into vessels, but cast the bad away. So, okay, we're going back into, the, here's the tares and the wheat. Here's the good and the evil. Here is the lump and leaven. And what Jesus has been telling us in Matthew 13, is sound for any age, including the church age, is here is the world. The field is the world. And in the world there's good of God and there's evil of Satan. And you say, well, there are good people, there are wonderful, excellent people. Oh, they got to go to heaven. No, they're tares. They look and they may act, they grow when it comes harvest time, they don't have the wheat fruit. And they don't have the wheat fruit. They're gathered up, bounded up, thrown into the fire. Like into a fishnet. They put the fishnet out, out in the sea. They bring it in. The good ones are gathered and kept. And the bad ones are thrown away. Hell is God's inferno of incendiary. Some, some, some areas of the world, they burn their trash. 
so shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth. Okay, we've seen that before in 13. Angels come. It's too bad for the Sadducees that if there's any there, because we read later on, we learn about they don't believe in angels. All the world is going to see angels. When we die and present with the Lord, or we're raptured, we'll see angels. Every 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 man saved and lost by their dispensation is going to see angels. And if the books are open and they go into into glory, into into Jehovah, okay, they're going to see angels. If they go off into the lake of fire that burns forever. It'll be the angels that casts them off. And sever, divide. There's a division among the world says get together, get together, get to work. You know, let's let's build this tower, let's get our all the, there, there's no such thing as a male and female. There's no such thing as black and white. Let's, we'll get everybody together and God says sever. God was severing. In Genesis 1, before man ever showed up, he separated day from night. God's a separator. Unity and getting together is not, not when it comes to mankind. Sever the wicked from among the just. But what makes them just over the wicked? They're just by what God said to do in their dispensation. And they did it to the fullest of their ability. Because they all have sinned. You're not going to find one 100% complete. But there were people, the Bible lists that they lived to the law according to what it should be. John the Baptist's parents, I would assume Mary, uh, Paul, the rich young ruler, but they still had that little sin. John the Baptist's father, Zacchaeus, I think he, he, he had a little doubt. <laughs> Paul didn't listen to God. Don't go to Jerusalem. I'm going to Jerusalem. Don't go to Jerusalem. Oh boy, he went to Jerusalem. That rich young ruler. I, I don't want to give it. I don't want to sell it all. Some people think that that was Paul. And later on, he he converted and got right. And thank glory to God, if it, it is. The only way you are just in any period, including church, is whatever you're today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're just. The rapture happens. You'll be called up. You're just. Not by what you've done, but what God has performed. I went to church. That, that, you, you're wicked. I kept the golden rule. I'm wicked. I kept the law in the church aid. That's wickedness. Because you utterly re rejected Jesus Christ today. And shall cast them forth, and shall cast them into, there's that furnace of fire again. Now we're at the end of the world, and there's judgment. And there's a fire. And the fire has been the same thing throughout Matthew 13. What do you think that fire is? When there's no earth, no heavens, no globe, no dirt, no more water. I mean, it says... That, Death and hell shall give up the dead that's in them, and the water shall give up the dead that's in them. So what is that fire? What is that hell? And Jehovah Witness will say, it's the grave. No, death and hell is cast in the lake of fire. Okay, if it is, well, okay, if the grave is hell, then... Wait a minute, death and hell? Huh. You got a problem there. Anyway, they both go into the lake of fire 
and shall be wailing and gnashing the teeth. And I said this the other night. I know Sunday school teeth, uh, you know, gnashing the teeth. And it, you know, some people say it goes and they go to hell. Isn't that what it says? <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> Fool me twice. You know, sometimes they get up and say the most stupidest thing. Even I've done it. Then said he unto them, uh, Jesus said unto them, Have you understood all these things? Just chapter, chapter 13, they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then said he unto them, now, if they did understand, okay, fine, but if they didn't understand, they're not going to get no more answers because, hey, yeah, we understand. And, and when you look at the disciples, they didn't get it. Because three days and three nights later, they are not at the tomb in their chairs waiting for him to come out of that tomb. And he outright told them over and over, three days and three nights, as the sign of Jonas, three days and three nights, he died. He was buried. Three days and three nights, they're up in the upper room hiding from the Jews. They didn't get it. Therefore, every scribe, which is in charge of the scriptures, which is instructed into unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a house owner which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old we're getting ready for the new testament we're not in the new testament yet because i already told you the testament begins with a death there's no death until the end of matthew mark luke and john that scribes in charge of the word that scribes in charge of the Bible. Jesus just told them, hey, there's a, I don't know if they call it the Old Testament, what they call it, but hey, there was an Old Testament. Get ready, here comes a new one. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he's coming to his own country, Nazareth, he taught them in the synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? And it's the kind of thing that it's not a question like a searching question. It's who, the, who, who do you think you are? You grew up amongst us. You offended us because you were Mr. Perfect. It's an attitude. Is not this the carpenter's son? Now, in Mark 4, I oh, know, 4, where is it? Oh, 55. I don't know what I'm I didn't turn the page. That's why. In Mark. Six for three. And I've been wrong on this. Is not this a carpenter's son? In Mark six three, they say, "Is this not the carpenter?" So the Bible does say that Jesus was a carpenter, and Joseph was a carpenter. But when they say carpenter's son, they're saying, "Hey, Jesus." is a product of Joseph and Mary, not not the virgin birth. That's what they're saying. They don't believe in the deity of Jesus like the Jehovah Witnesses. He's not the carpenter's son to the fact of natural birth of Joseph being a natural son, I mean natural father, excuse me. As far as the adopted father of Jesus, okay, yes, he's the carpenter's son. Biological, that's the word I was looking for. No. 
adopted. Yes. Is not his mother called Mary? She's called Mary. Now watch this, Mr. Catholic. His brethren, James, Joseph, Simon. Jesus had a brother the same name as Peter. And Judas. And the same name, not Judas Iscariot, but the same name of the, of the man who's going to betray him. Look how common these names were. That's his brothers. That, that, that's not his Baptist or Catholic relations. Because the Catholic Church would say, well, you know how you call each other brother in the church? You call each other sister in the church? That's what they mean there. They were actually cousins. No, it does not say cousins. Because when you read about Elizabeth and Mary, it says Elizabeth was the cousin. Or Mary was the cousin. The Bible knows what a cousin is. And his sisters. That's not a fraternity ward of women in the church. As the Catholics will say. Are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? <laughs> what give him to, to heal everything? And, and teach what he's... What, what gives him the right to stand in our synagogue? You look at verse 54. When he's coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, not God's. Look what God said. As far as their synagogue, it's theirs. It's not mine. You know what your church may be? In the archives of heaven, in the records and rolls of heaven, your church may be, that's their, that's their building. That group over there, I assemble where they meet. Over there, that's their building. The Jews were meeting in buildings. And God said, that's their building. Not mine. The Laodicean church age is a period where Jesus is standing outside the door, the only place the church is spoken of as a building, and Jesus Christ is standing outside the door. Can I, come, can I ask you to come out? You want to come out? You want to get out of that nonsense? Because I ain't going to come in and kick tables over. I'm just not going to come in. Verse 57, and they were offended in him. We are in the offended reign of mankind today. Everybody's offended at everything. They are offended of pronouns. Oh. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. The people of your hometown, the people of your own home, your family, they're not going to really believe everything. Because you know what? They grew, they knew you when you grew up. They know you're good and they're bad. Jesus didn't have any bad. I would assume that what they hated about Jesus or were offended about Jesus because he was Mr. Perfect. He was the best student, the best child, the best one of all. I mean, can you imagine sitting in, sitting in a classroom in Nazareth, and, and kids will say, teachers say, okay, tell us your name so we can get to meet, meet everybody in person. I mean, you got high expectations. I'm Ruth. I may have. I'm Joseph. I'm Thomas. I'm Jesus. Oh, boy. I hope the teacher don't grade on the curve in this class. Now, class, sit down. We're, we're going to take out the Torah. We're going to learn about the thing. Jesus, will you? Oh, no. Not yet. And can you imagine, can you imagine the streets of Nazareth Jesus grew up? Look at Jesus. 
mother told him to go down to Mark and get and get, get some tomato. He got tomato and he brought home cucumbers. She didn't know she knew cucumbers. But, but, oh, God, you bought the cucumbers because I needed them. Jesus would go down, get the water, wouldn't fool around, go back. And we'll come to the same, but nine o'clock. Jesus, time for bed, go to bed. Boom, he's in the thing, going to bed. Come on, James and Joseph, stop fooling around. I told you guys go to bed. Jesus is in bed sleeping. And we've got kids, why can't you act like your brother? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if, if Jesus' brothers were wanting to kill him before he was even an adult. My brother's like that. And I went to, I went into school with his shadow, and they wanted to be just like Frank. And I wasn't Frank, and I proved to not be Frank. I think some of my rebellion grew up in schools that proved, I am not him, I am me. I told a guy the other day, I said, I said he goes, he goes, oh, I'm from Connecticut. He says, the Yankees are Red Sox. I mean, anybody from New England. Guys, are you Yankees or Red Sox? I said, I'll tell you like this. My family, Yankees, me, Red Sox. I was only for Red Sox because my family liked the Yankees. <laughs> I didn't want to be in anybody's shoe. Now watch this, verse 58. Now whose failure is this? He did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Can you believe it? Jesus was where he couldn't do much. Because they didn't believe him. That's how bad it was in his hometown. Now I don't know if Blind people came to him, he had to turn them away, or it just didn't work. I don't know. Maybe nobody even came to him. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine building a hospital and you open up the doors and no one comes? I don't think that hospital can heal me. I don't think that hospital can do anything for me. A lot of times that happens in your African nations or your nations where missionaries go because you know you can't get the witch doctor or wh whoever that being is of their tribe we don't go to your medicines your potions the, the, the voodoo the, the witch doctor the whatever guru so read first in verse 44 is there's that field and we already read in 13 field is the world there's a treasure in the world. And the person that found it, the man that found it, hides. And God and his son, you don't see them today. They're hiding. And yet for them, we are their joy. And Jesus gives it all up. He leaves the throne of heaven to come to the scumbag world to be tortured and killed. But he purchased the world. He purchased the field. For God so loved the world that he gave. There it is. The merchant man looking for godly pearls. There's that one pearl. That one pearl is the nation of Israel. John says he came unto his own. There they are. And many of those Jews he loved. He cried and wept over Jerusalem. He wept at Lazarus' funeral. He took everything he had. He said, I'm buying them. And it would be with agony towards God, the Jews that do go into the lake of fire. Because that's not what it was planned. And then that net that draws back to the other parables and the other mission. And the whole world is made of a bunch of good people and bad people. They're either of Satan or they're of God. And if they're of Satan, they go to hell. If they're of God, they go into the good of God. And the good is by what God says in their dispensation. That's why you got to do the dispensations right. 
You can't mess up the dispensations. If you mess up the dispensations, you have messed up Bible teaching. You cannot build an ark in 2000, I don't know what year they built it, and think I'm right with God because nowhere in this time period of this church age of any seven did God say build an ark. There were Christians in Paul's time, I believe it's the Galatian, the, the, the Galatian church. They wanted to go back to the law. I think it was the Galatians. And Paul rebuked them harshly in the letter. You don't go back into another dispensation. You don't be, well, God's all finished with the Jew. Now, you know, we the church. Ta -da! That's what started America. Massachusetts Bay was to be the great city on a hilltop. The great. <laughs> and then the, the congregational church came. And you know what the congregational church did? It did. The works of the Old Testament. If you don't belong to our church, you don't tie to our church, uh, confiscation, banishment. And that happened with the Aguilar Church down south. That's what's going on in Utah with the Mormons. You know, Jesus Christ, the, the other New Testament, whatever it is. When you mess up the dispensations, you mess up your doctrine. You mess up your teaching. And the Baptist church runs to Matthew, runs to Matthew, runs. You're messing with the dispensations. That's why the Baptist church is all messed up. And that's, that's where you get a cult from. From the wrong dispensation. I mean, Paul it's not Paul only is it. Or else we were not done Genesis to Matthew so far. As I have been accused of. But if you want serious doctrine for the church, you run and see what Paul said. You know, all, you know, really, you cannot find anything written to lost people in Paul's writings because it's all written to Christians. Oh, the wages of sin is death, but to get to God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's written to Christians. After they say, well, you know, if I got the Holy Spirit, and I got, you know, and I'm not under the law, I can go, da -da, I can go sin and do whatever I want to do, which some churches teach. <laughs> Again, you're wrong. You got to rightly divide the scripture. 